How does a red light therapy mask compare to a red light therapy panel? And should you buy one over the other? I'm gonna help you make that decision. Let's get into it. So beside me, I have two red light therapy panels. These are smaller tabletop panels. I've also got two popular red light therapy masks. The Omnilux men's mask, which I have running here, and the Dermabeam mask, which looks slightly different, but at the end of the day, all of these products do the same thing. They simply emit light. Now, I've actually reviewed all of these products. I'll put links to those reviews below if you wanna check them out. But a common question I get on these videos is, how does the mask compare to a panel? Or how does a panel compare to a mask? And it's a good question. The first key difference between these products is price. Typically for a tabletop panel with say 50 to 100 LEDs, you're gonna spend anything from say $250 up to $600. Of course, you can get larger panels with hundreds of LEDs and you're spending multiple thousands of dollars. But if the goal is to treat your face, then of course a panel of this size is most appropriate for the comparison. The infrared mini that I have here retails for about $550. The Mito Red Pro is about three, dollars $400. You can get a lower cost panel such as the Huga 300 and that sells for about $260. I should mention I have discounts for these products. I'll put them all below, but code Alex will save you even more money on these prices. When we compare this to the masks, we have $400 for the Omnilux and $250 for the Dermabeam mask. Again, discount codes and links are below. So depending on what company you go for and the features, it's a similar sort of ballpark. But what about power output? Because at the end of the day, that's really what we're buying here. We're buying a device that can emit a decent amount of therapeutic red light or near red light or even blue light onto the skin, onto the body, because all of these products in front of me have LEDs built into them. So I actually have a rather expensive device called a spectrometer. What this device does is measures the light output in both the wavelength and also the power intensity. Now we know based on the literature, there's a certain amount of power we need in particular wavelengths to get a benefit. If it's underpowered, it means you're gonna need a much larger treatment time to get enough therapeutic energy into the tissues. And in fact, if it's too low a powered, we may get no benefit at all. So yes, it is important to measure power. Now, if you're gonna guess which ones are more powerful, you're probably gonna guess the panels, right? And that's true. These panels are a lot more powerful than a mask. I mean, just simply look at how they're built. They're built with metal. They have large fans on the back because the LEDs and the drivers put out a lot of power and get rather hot so they need to cool them. They plug directly into the wall, so they're using a lot more energy. These aren't battery powered devices. Plus, these panels are extremely bright, bright enough to light up an entire room. The masks on the other hand, really quite basic. Just a silicon mask with some little LED chips built in. They're battery powered, you get about an hour's use out of them before you need to charge again. There's no issues with cooling, there's no fans, there's no heat sinks. In fact, they're made out of plastic, so it's clear you're not gonna get much heat buildup. So what does my device say? Well, a tabletop panel is gonna put out anything from say 40 to 60 milliwatts over centimeter squared of therapeutic light at six inches. Remember, that's six inches away from the panel. The closer you get to the panel or the light source, the more energy that's gonna be. The masks on the other hand, are anything from say one to 25 milliwatts over centimeter squared. And that's right up against the LED. If you measured it at six inches, the numbers would be minuscule. I test it up against the LEDs, of course, because you're gonna wear it directly on your face. But a one to 25 versus a 40 to 75, it's a huge difference. If you're going for a dose of say 10 joules over centimeter squared, which is quite a low dose, but it's what a lot of people use and recommend for surface level improvements, which is what you want with skin healing devices, then you really only need to be in front of a panel for about two or three minutes at six inches. However, to get the same dosage from the Omnilux, you're gonna need about 10 to 15 minutes. For the Dermabean mask, an hour to an hour and a half. It's a big difference. More power is definitely better and the panels are the standout here. Another way to compare the two is from a value point of view. With the panels, you're paying about four to $10 for each therapeutic watt of light you're getting. Compare this to the masks and it's about 16 to $200. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck with the panels. All right, what about wavelengths? Now wavelengths is quite interesting. I've done videos on the best wavelengths you need for beauty and skin health. 
Uh, we've taken deep dives into things such as blue light, uh, near infrared, 810 light. Or I'll put all the links to these videos below and also some blog articles to check out. Now really when it comes to skin health and beauty, you're needing your red lights, you're needing some near infrared light. And if you suffer from acne, then there is a particular wavelength in the blue spectrum that can be beneficial as well. Well, with your panels, you're getting your red lights in your 660 range. You're also getting your near infrared lights, say your 850s, maybe your 810s. There is one panel out there, the Biomax, that also has blue light. It's not the best blue light for acne, but it does have some benefits as well. With the masks, it's quite similar. The Omnilux, you're getting 630 red light, 830 near infrared light, and you're also getting a 1070 near infrared, which is deeper penetrating which is a nice addition. We don't see that in the panels. With the Dermabeam, it's a little bit different again. Yes, you get some red light in 630, but you're also getting some green and blue light. The blue light though is the same as what's in the Biomax 460, 470. It's not really great for acne. Uh, the green, I'm not too sure that what benefits the green has. If you look closely at the layout of the LEDs on a mask, you'll see that there's massive gaps around the LEDs. There's about an inch spacing between each LED. The derma beam isn't as bad, maybe half an inch, but remember these LEDs are, are a lot less powerful. Now one may argue that it's the same for a panel, but the key thing here is how you use these devices. With a panel, you're typically a couple inches away from the device. I measured those power figures before at six inches. Some people will go closer, some people will go further away. But remember the power was really, really good at six inches. And the power is only gonna be more powerful the closer you get to the LEDs. But at six inches, you get a nice spread of light. So if a panel such as this infrared flex here has four or maybe five wavelengths in it, all of that light is gonna be blended nice and e evenly across the face. We use the masks differently. They're applied directly to the skin. What does this mean? Well, you're not gonna get that really nice coverage of light. Given the LEDs are hard up against the skin, and there may be a whole inch before we get to the next LED. What I'm saying here is the panels are going to provide better light coverage than a mask. You could use the mask away from the body to get better treatment area, but the downside with that is the power level is going to be very, very low. You're pretty much wasting your time. And of course, that's not how these are meant to be used. They're meant to be used on the body, on the face. What about warranty? Well, you're getting a longer warranty with panels. Typically you see two to three years, sometimes longer. With the masks, it's one or two years. All right, finally, we have ease of use and functionality. I've been using red light therapy devices for six or seven years now. I've used lots and lots of panels and I've used a couple of masks as well. I can tell you now, I much prefer using a panel than a mask. Here's why. Firstly, the masks are rather uncomfortable and awkward. Getting them on is a bit frustrating, especially this Omnilux, the straps are rather annoying. Check out my full review uh, to learn more about that. Secondly, once they're on, your visibility is restricted. Yes, you can still read and move around, uh, but it, it's not really ideal. Not to mention you kind of look silly if someone walks into the room. The panels, on the other hand, in my opinion, are much easier to use. You simply turn them on, position your face in front of the light, away you go. You can still use your phone if you want to. Of course, you don't want to block the light. You could read a book or you can just close your eyes and meditate or listen to a podcast. But remember, the treatment times are a lot less with a panel than they are with a mask. I should also mention that panels offer a lot more functionality. There's inbuilt timers, you can change the intensity, you can select between what wavelengths you want on or off. You can't really do these things with the mask. They have a built-in 10 minute session timer and that's it. I should note though that the Dermabeam does have an option where you can change between the wavelengths. Lastly, I do need to point out that the masks are typically a lot smaller and lighter. That is good if you travel a lot and you wanna use it when you're away. Panels are a little bit more bulkier and heavy, plus you need to pack cables, and they're probably not the best for traveling. However, I have done a video helping you to find the best tabletop panel for traveling. I'll put a link to that below if you wanna check that out. So overall then, what's better? Well, they're priced relatively the same. However, a panel is gonna give you much more power, which is gonna mean better penetration. It's also gonna mean better light coverage on the face, plus shorter treatment times. The wavelengths that you're getting in the panels are what we know what works. The Omnilux does have that 1070 nanometer near infrared light, which is kind of interesting and something we haven't seen in the panels, but there's not a ton of research around that 1070. All we know is it penetrates deeper but you're getting a lot of near infrared light in these panels anyway at a much higher radiance. 
so penetration shouldn't be an issue. The masks do provide an advantage in the sense that you can use them and move around, but I've done a few experiments with these masks and I can tell you now, I was glad when that experiment ended and I could go back to using my regular panels. Putting the straps on, building up a bit of a sweat, being restricted with your visibility, it's not the most fun 10 minutes of your life. In my opinion, if someone comes to me having no red light therapy device and their goal is to improve skin tone, boost collagen, get rid of the fine wrinkles and all that good stuff, then I'm going to point them to a panel. Why then are we seeing so many people using masks and raving about them? Well, it's simply because marketing is a very powerful thing. There's a lot of influences in the beauty space, including massive marketing budgets. And we know that red light therapy works. So it's not surprising that women are getting great results using these products. What I'm saying though, is you can probably get better results and faster, and maybe even at a better price point if you're using a panel. To put it bluntly, a red light therapy panel is not quite as sexy to sell as a mask. But really, at the end of the day, all we're after is light and the right light and the right wavelengths, light in a particular wavelength and at the right dosage. Panels do a much better job of doing this than a mask. And though they retail for similar amounts as the masks, I wouldn't be surprised if they cost a lot more to produce than a simple mask like this. So if you're set on getting a mask even after watching this video, that's cool. I'm sure you'll still get some good results. However, really stop and think about what you're buying here. You're really just buying LEDs emitting light. And then think, do I really want to be wearing a mask all the time? Or could I just simply have my face in front of the panel? One final thing I need to mention is red light therapy works wonders on all areas of the body. Maybe you've sprained an ankle. Maybe you got sunburned. Maybe you cut yourself. Maybe you suffer from joint pain. Red light therapy is going to help. Yes, in theory, you could still use your mask on your elbow or on your back or on that wound, but treating that problematic area is going to be a lot more easier with the panel. Plus everyone in your household can easily use it as well. Now you've probably got to this part of the video and think, all right, great, Alex, you've convinced me. Now I need to get a panel. What should I get? Well, that's where this video comes in. Here I look at 10 different red light therapy tabletop panels, and I find the best one for those of you focused on skin and beauty improvements. Otherwise, if you've got any questions, leave them below.